This is Dr. Carroll, and this video is about bubble sort. Bubble sort is a classic computer science sorting algorithm, and, and you'll see why in just a moment here. Okay, so first off, what are the steps for a bubble sort? It's pretty simple, and the first step is we're going to iterate through the unsorted portion of the array and swap a pair of numbers in the array if the left number is greater than the right number. And so this is where it gets its name. It bubbles the larger number into place uh, progressively looking at pairs of numbers. Well, as you might have guessed, the second step is we're going to repeat the first step until there's no more numbers to sort. Let's look at some examples. Let's first look at a random initial array. So 71953. So initially, we know nothing about the array. And so the sorted portion is entirely empty. There, there's not a single number in the sorted portion of the array. Okay. And now, as, as I mentioned, we're going to iterate through it and we're going to swap numbers, the larger number, if it's on the left. So here we compare 7 and 1 and we swap the 2 because 7 is larger than 1, but it appears on its left. We're bubbling 7 up. Now, the, the next step, we're going to look at 7 and 9. Now, 7 is less than 9, so we're, we're not going to swap them. Then we'd look at 9 and 5, and we'd say, oh, um, 9 and 5, 9 is larger, so we're going to bubble 9 up. We're going to swap 9 and 5. You notice 9 is bubbling up toward its, its location. And again, we're going we're gonna to look between 9 and 3 here and say, hmm, is 9 greater than 3? Yes, it is. We're going to bubble up 9 again. Okay, And so then it, it's going to be into its final location here. And we'll indicate that by uh, moving the sorted portion of the array. We no longer need to consider 9 because we know that it's in its final place because one iteration through bubbling the larger of the two numbers will always get its the largest number all of the way to the right. Doesn't matter if it starts here, if it starts in, in its final place, it'll always get there. Whew. Okay, that's one iteration. Let's go to the next. Okay, and so we, we start off and oh, there's nothing to, to swap there. But we when we consider 7 and 5, we do need to, to swap bubble 7 up. Again, we need to bubble 7 up again, uh, swapping it with 3 this time. Now, now, we've gone through this the entire unsorted portion of the array, and therefore we know that 7 is now in its final place. We've bubbled it up, so we can move our little indicator here to say, hey, this is a sorted portion of the array, and it's guaranteed to be sorted. Okay. Well, now we analyze this pair here. And nope, they're in order. Oh, but five and three, five needs to be bubbled up. And oh, now it's in its final place. Okay. Whew. It's getting a little shorter here. Now we, nope, nothing to swap between one and three. And so now um, we move the sorted portion down one, but there's only one left. And so there's no point in having an unsorted portion of size one because we know that's sorted. And then we're done. That was a lot of steps. Let's see another example. This time, the best case. What would be the best case? What would be the best case? Well, it turns out the best case is if the array is already sorted. So as we go through, we say, hey, do we need to keep track? Or, sorry. We go through and say, hey, do we need to swap? No, we don't. Do we need to swap between 3 and 5? No, we don't. Do we need to swap between 5 and 7? No. 7 and 9? No, we don't. And so if we simply add simply keep track um, if we made any swaps in the current iteration, then we know that we're done early and we can we can be done. And so that's its um, bubble sort's really saving grace. Uh, one of its two best attributes is that it, it can be very quick if the array is already sorted. Let's look at another example. This time, worst case. What would be the very worst case? You guessed it. The worst case is the array is complete. The array is in descending order, and we're trying to get it into ascending order. So here we have nine, seven, five, three, one, and we bubble through. We need to swap nine and seven, nine and five, nine and three, nine and one, 
And then we finally got nine into its right place. Then we need to swap, swap, swap. And then we finally have seven in its final place. Again, we need to swap, bubble up, bubble up, and then five is in its correct place. We need to bubble up, and then now we know that three is in its correct place, but now then we have an unsorted portion just size one, so then the entire array is sorted. Let's look at some skeleton code. So what we need to do is for each index i, we, we keep track. This is really the pass-through. Uh, we're not going to use this variable really, but it's more of how many times do we need to go through a, a maximum number here. So, and we'll just keep track of where the largest unsorted value will go and, and keep track of it that way. And then we're going to walk through the unsorted portion and compare each pair of numbers and bubble up it if the, the, a larger number appears on the left or the, the smaller index. And so we needed to go from 0 up to i to, to bubble up the, the largest number. And, and if we find, find one that, that is this, the, the one on the left is larger than the one on the right, then we sim simply swap it. And, and that's it. And for simplicity, I, have, I haven't included a Boolean to keep track of it if it's sorted for um, for each pass through the, the outer loop. And so you can plainly see why people think that bubble sort is one of the simplest sorting algorithms there is. Now let's talk about its attributes. Is it stable? Well, yes it is. It keeps track of the original order, only bubbling them up one at a time. Does it take extra space? No, we, we need to, again, keep track of uh, the temporary variable for the swap and the loop indices. And again, uh, in terms of its big O, uh, it has a nested for loop structure yielding a big O of n squared because the outer loop is doing approximately order n work. And again, we're doing about order n work again here in the, the inner loop. Um, and, and it's the same for the worst case. It actually does a lot of steps. But if the array is sorted or nearly sorted, it goes a lot faster and therefore it is adaptive. That's it for this video on bubble sort.